Okay, so next up we're gonna take a look again, uh, same as with the Prusa, the kind of L-shaped 90 degree angle uh, part with a, it's got a couple holes in it. And we're just gonna kinda take a little bit uh, of a dive into the support material structure in Cura. So I've exported this as an STL and opened it up in Cura. And it's in millimeters, of course. So we'll take a look at, first of all, uh, we're using the Lulzbot Mini. So you can see the part orientation on there, on the build plate. And we're using PLA. And we're gonna use the standard profile, uh, but make, you know, a few adjustments here. So I think our wall count can probably stay at three. And our infill, uh, we'll keep that at 10%. And so then for our support material, you know, we'll make sure that is checked. Um, our support overhang angle is 50 degrees. And a really nice thing about Cura too is if you just hover over a dialog box, it'll give you a really good description of, of what it's doing for you. Um, another thing I like to look at is, you know, support density. Um, that can kind of go up or down depending on the area you're supporting. If there's a lot of complex detail, um, you know, if you need to really preserve that detail, the, the higher that is, uh, sometimes the better chance of that you get, but uh, the more dense it is, though, it's also a bit harder to take off. Um, enabling your support interface is good, so let's just disable that first so you can kind of get a good idea of what that does. Um, so generating support everywhere, and we're at 30%, and let's see how that looks. Okay, so generated. Let's go to our layer view. And here we can see the object. So once again, we're kind of undesirably filling in that hole. And we've generated the uh, zigzag support material. So if we bring the object down, kind of scrub through it, we can see that that layer is supported by uh, those zigzags there. So that'll easily kind of be able to be broken out uh, once we're once we've printed our object. Um, one thing I like uh, to do though is add the support interface. So this adds a little layer in between. So we can take a look. So looks like we build one, two layers before we hit the object, which is good. Um, you kind of want to look at the Z distance too. This is, this would be one of the more important um, features to adjust. If I remember correctly, it's usually at point one or point two um, in this program and if you look at your standard layer height at 0.25 it should be minimum that distance away so if I keep that at 0.25 or even you know maybe a little bit more than that um, that support material will break off easier because that's the air gap in between the part and the support material. The uh, another thing you want to look at too is the uh, support interface density. So right now it's at a hundred percent. You know we could maybe bring that down to like sixty or eighty. 
and that case makes it a little bit easier to break away. Uh, you know, concentric circles for this interface pattern, that's probably fine. Um, you can change that. And then, yeah, so that looks good. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so we're a little bit spaced out, which I tend to like better. You, you might not get as much bonding between the materials. Um, so I think that's pretty good. And, you know, support interface is, you know, you don't have to use it, but I think it gives you a little bit better surface. So I generally try it out to see if I like it or not. And, you know, adjust from there. Um, I don't think I'm going to change anything else from that. So once again, though, we need to look at this area here that's being, so we're going to try to generate some support blockers. And there's some specific settings in Cura that come pre-checked that you'll need to adjust to uh, move the support blockers around. So we can go back to our solid view and we'll select our object so we get these get access to these uh, features here, this menu. And so we're going to do a support blocker. So if I click on that and then click on my object to tell it that that's the object I want it to apply to. You don't get a choice in what that looks like. It drops down as a cube. And you also don't get a choice in where that goes. So I can't pull it off of the platform because every object that comes into Cura snaps to the platform. So that's, that's a good thing most of the time because you need your part to build against the platform. But for a support blocker, we need to move that around. So we need to go into Preferences and Configure Cura. And if we look under the Viewport Behavior, we can kind of come down and we can see this is checked automatically drop models to the build plate. So I'm going to uncheck that for this operation right now, but in the future when we're importing new models, you might want to come back to that and check that so you can make sure your object is touching the build plate. Um, but for some for some models you may not want them to touch the build plate. You want you may want to build support up to the base of the model. Um, a lot of you know, if you have like a lot of rounded features on the bottom of your part, uh, those aren't going to do much good touching the build plate anyways. So you may elevate your piece using that feature there, or I say unchecking that feature. Okay, so now I can put that wherever I want. And I can scale that out. So let's see, yeah, so we're um, unchecked on uniform scaling. Sometimes that is checked because I just want to pull that out. And let's move that, oops, just that into the part there. And that's okay if we're sticking out a little bit on either side doesn't matter too much. So now we'll prepare and we'll change our view to layer and now we can see that we are not performing a support material there. So that's one way to do it. The other way if you happen to have a part there that is not touching the build plate. Just come up to support placement and say touching build plate. 
that will naturally build. Let's get rid of that support blocker first. Maybe. There we go. So now we can say, okay, prepare. Look at the layer view. And now it's automatically, it's not putting support there for us. So yeah, so there's a couple ways to handle that, um, you know, depending on your object. I just wanted to kind of go over both in this software. Um, so you can have some options depending on your situation. Uh, once again, if you'll remember, we kind of want this object, you know, to print on its side, if at all possible. Uh, so if we were to reorient that, so we can rotate this model to 90 degrees, and should be able to say lay flat. So, as we can see, it's not snapping to the build plate. So we need to go back into configure Cura and automatically drop to the build plate. So there we go. Now it's actually going to build there. Let's prepare that. Go to layer view and no support material. And that is uh, the ideal way to build this form. But if you have to build it in other orientations, uh, you should have some tools to allow you to do so. Great. So thanks again for watching, and uh, see you in the next one. Thanks.